Hi guys, so today we're going to take the information we discussed earlier about the atomic number, atomic mass, element symbol name, all that information and how to use it to make a Bohr model now. So I have that same worksheet we filled out earlier um, to have out in front of us and I have my periodic table as well and we'll use this a little bit more detail in this video. But I'm going to make a Bohr's model of the atom. Now, the Bohr's model, there are different models of atoms, but the Bohr's model is a kind of a nice model to use in terms of looking at the number of electrons and where they are in comparison to the nucleus. So um, here I've got my fluorine nitrogen box that I just filled out. We're going to make the Bohr's model for, um, for those elements down below. And I'm going to start with fluorine. Now there's a couple things you need to know first in relationship to the Bohr's model. So the Bohr's model arranges the electrons in what we call orbitals or shells. So they're the circles that are coming out within the atom. Now uh, in actuality the electrons don't orbit in a nice circle pattern. Um, they kind of float around, make a hazy appearance around a cloud. But uh, they do have some relationships in terms of how close they are to the nucleus and, and how many can fit within them. So in the Bohr's model, the first shell or orbital can hold up to two electrons. Once it has two electrons in its inner shell, innermost orbital, Anything beyond that gets kicked down to the next shell, the next layer. So the second shell can hold up to eight electrons in its outermost layer, outermost level. The third shell can hold up to 18 but if it has eight, we call this the octet rule, it's considered filled. Now, in this class, we won't go beyond the third shell just because it starts to get a little tedious in writing down all the uh, little electrons. But you'll go beyond that when you get to high school. Now, here's the nifty thing. Your periodic table, it's a little cheat sheet. It tells you how many shells you need, how many orbitals you need for that element. That's what the periods are for. So each period tells you how many layers, how many levels you need for your atom. So everything in period one, hydrogen and helium, only needs one orbital, one shell. All the elements in period two, lithium, beryllium, boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, neon, all needs two shells. Three, period three, sodium, magnesium, aluminum, silicon, phosphorus, sulfur, chlorine, argon, three shells. Everything in period four, four shells, period five, five, sh five shells, so on and so forth. So um, it's a nice little cheat sheet. So if I know where the um, element is on the table, I know where to go, where to start uh, my drawings on. So fluorine, just the camera here a little bit, fluorine has nine for its atomic number. So that means it has nine protons. It also means it has nine electrons. Now, when I do my Bohr's model of fluorine, we start the electrons on the inside and work our way out. And we arrange the electrons like we would a face of a clock. So when I just put in perspective here, I'm going to draw a clock. We want to think of it in terms of three, six, and nine. You know, if this was a little clock here. I'm going to say it's 3 o'clock because it's after hours and you want to get home. Okay, so when I'm putting my electrons, I'm going to put them in order of the clock. So the first shell, the first layer, can only hold up to two electrons. So I'm going to put that in perspective of 12 and 6, the top and bottom. So that's 1, 2. But fluorine doesn't have just two electrons. It has nine electrons. So I'm going to have to put the remaining electrons, once the inner orbital is filled, they get kicked out into the next orbital. So I've got two electrons here, so the remaining seven are going to go in the outermost orbital. So I've got three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 
nine electrons, nine electrons represented. Now here's a nice little tidbit of information, okay? The outermost layer, okay, we call those valence electrons. Fluorine has seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven electrons in its outermost layer. If I look at the group number, okay, fluorine, let me slide this in here, fluorine belongs to group 17 or 7A. The group number can give you an idea of how many electrons there are in the outermost level. So again, there's that cheat sheet that's helping you. Periods tell you the number of shells you need, so fluorine has two shells. Groups tell you the number of electrons in the outer layer. So again, fluorine here, group seven, has seven electrons in its outermost layer. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven electrons in its outermost layer, but nine electrons total. So let's look at nitrogen. Nitrogen has seven electrons total. So I'm going to look at nitrogen here. Nitrogen is in period two, so it's going to have two orbitals. Okay, so period two, two orbitals. It almost feels like I'm playing Battleship. So it's got two orbitals. I'm going to do the first orbital first. So it has seven electrons total. So here's one, here's two. Now I'm going to put the remaining in the outer level. So once it's filled, I move on to the next level. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So I have my seven electrons represented. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And note, again, electrons in the outermost layer, those valence electrons. Here, nitrogen has one, two, three, four, five. Five valence electrons. If I go to my periodic table, nitrogen belongs to group 15 or 5A. So again, five valence electrons are found in nitrogen. So again, there's that cheat sheet coming in handy. Nitrogen's in period two, so it has two orbitals, two circles. It's in group 5A, so it'll have five electrons in its outermost orbital. So now I'm going to let you figure out sodium. And you're going to work through sodium, and I will, or whoever the sub is, will check to make sure your sodium model is filled out correctly.